All right, in this video, I'm talking about hedonic editing, which is a subcategory of mental accounting that's an application of prospect theory. So we know the prospect theory graph is simply a shape of a utility function. This is the classic utility function shape in the positive realm. There's strong evidence that the shape of the utility function in the negative realm often follows this shape where we've got loss aversion, we've got um, risk-seeking behavior in the negative realm where we have uh, risk-averse behavior in the positive realm, and we have some kind of reference point at the origin. And that reference point might be expectations or it might be something else. Um, so what is hedonic editing? Hedonic editing is going to be where you partition things strategically in order to frame the utility. So it's about either partitioning money or partitioning events so that you're sort of separating out certain events or clumping events together. So the question is, if you have five losses this year and three gains this year, and those are all of different amounts, should you clump the losses together? Should you clump the gains together? Or should you keep them separate? And of course, when we look at the prospect theory graph, we're going to see that um, near the origin, near the reference point, you get this huge windfall. Whereas if you're sort of out here, um, there's very low marginal gain from going from here to here, but a very high marginal gain from going from the origin to here. And same thing in the negative realm. We have this huge windfall down when you're moving away from or the origin or expectations. So when you're thinking about how to clump gains or losses together, you might want to strategically think about avoiding the negative windfall and seeking out as many as possible of the positive windfall. And that's the basic idea behind hedonic editing. Now, before I explain this in more detail, I want to give a general sense of how this would be used by someone. So there's a few different ways it can be used. One is to manipulate yourself and how you feel. So this would be like if you had five negative things happen this month and three positive things that happened this month, how should you frame your memory of the month when you're sort of reviewing it? Should you clump certain things together? Should you separate out certain things? And that's gonna actually influence how you feel about it if your utility function follows this shape. And people generally do have utility functions that follow this shape. So that would be self-manipulation. Now, you can manipulate others as well, and I, I'm gonna put an asterisk here that, of course, you need to think about the ethics of manipulating people, but even if you're not comfortable manipulating people, which maybe you shouldn't be, you need to be aware that other people might manipulate you. So let's say, for example, you are the CEO of a company, and you're going to present information about the company's ups and downs for the year, and you're gonna present it to potential shareholders or to members of the public whose perception of your company might impact their valuation or their willingness to pay for shares in your company. In which case, you might want to strategically frame that information taking into account prospect theory. So that's what we're doing here. We're really thinking about how do you frame the clumping or separating of different gains or losses in money or in events in your life. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna think about two weeks. One week has five really good things that happen to you, another has five really bad things that happen to you. So the question is, how do you want to remember that week? Um, to maximize your own happiness. And you probably already intuitively sense how to do this. So when you have five good things that happen, the question is, do you want to add them together, to clump them together, in which case, um, let's just say there are five equally happy events. So you have one happy event. So here we have one, two, three, four, five happy things happen to you. If you clump them together, your utility for those five things is going to be represented up here. Not bad, but um, you look, the highest marginal utility comes from the first happy thing. That, of course, is our windfall, and we want as many of these windfalls as possible. So if instead of thinking of those as five happy things clumped together, we thought of them separately as this event happened, stop, reset, our origin and say, then this thing happened. In which case, what we're gonna have is uh, this gain in utility five times. And that's way up, up above the, the top of the whiteboard because um, 
if you have this utility five times, that's way higher than the utility if you clump them together. So principle number one when it comes to hedonic editing is that you're going to separate out gains so that you experience the windfall that comes from um, going from zero to one a bunch of times or as many times as possible. You don't want to clump your gains together, you want to separate them out. And you probably already have the intuition you're going to want to clump your losses together to minimize the amount of times that you experience this huge negative windfall. So if five bad things happen to you, you don't want to go um, from zero to one five times. That would give you a loss of five times this amount and of course Humans are very loss averse, so our, our loss we experience from losing one is worse than our gain from losing one. We don't want to experience that five times. So if five bad things happen, you're much better off clumping them together um, as such. So if five bad things happen to you, you have five losses, one, two, three, four, five, which you clump together into one single bad week, just chalk it off as a bad week, all clumped together. You do have negative utility, but it's not nearly as bad as if you looked at those five things five separate times, in which case your negative utility is this times five, which is way down through the floor. So um, the way you frame these different weeks with five positive events and five negative events is actually going to influence how you feel about those weeks. And having good habits where you're separating out gains and experiencing each one as a separate thing and clumping together losses, just chalking it up as a bad week or a bad class or a bad um, year for the company, bad year for your career, clumping losses is going to be very helpful. Now how might CEOs use this same principle? Well, they're going to use it in the same way. So you get to the end of the year and you have a number of negative financial events that happen, a number of positive financial events that happen, um, projects fall through, through and aren't going to work out, deals that you lose because someone backs out at the last minute, and then you have a bunch of positive things, new customers that signed up with you. Um, lots of positive things happen throughout the year, so you have to decide how do you present it to an audience to make your company look as good as possible. And sort of clumping the losses together as much as you can and separating out the gains is going to actually um, influence how people perceive your company based on people's sort of intuitive um, feelings reaction to gains and losses. Now, there's a little more to prospect theory, but, but not much more. It's basically, um, sometimes you have both losses and gains in the same year or in the same week, in which case, how do you clump those gains and losses? And you, the answer is basically you do it creatively. Like, let's say we had a gain of two, um, or let's say we had two gains. So gain one, gain two, and we had one loss. Third thing that happened was a loss. Well, um, we know that a loss, th the loss realm is really, really bad. So in instead of experiencing one, two, three, we can clump um, events two and three together, in which case our net gain, so, so these are going to cancel each other out, one good thing happened, a second good thing happened, a bad thing happened, all of equal magnitude. We'll just sort of clump those two together. The good thing happened, the bad thing happened, they washed each other out. So our net gain is going to be just the increase in one. And that's going to be a much better utility than if we kept these separate, because if we keep them all three separate, even if we experience this twice, this loss is going to be really huge because people have loss aversion. So we want to avoid this, this negative um, windfall as much as we possibly can by clumping it with the positives whenever we can do that. So, um, and of course it depends on how, how much loss aversion you have. Maybe you're a person who doesn't experience losses that, that badly and maybe in which case there's other strategies that are going to work for you, but basically you can clump things together and separate them with this prospect theory graph in mind and that's going to actually influence your utility. That's the basics of hedonic editing. I hope you find this helpful in terms of thinking about behavioral economics and the way people interact with their own utility functions. This really is about framing and framing is very important in terms of people's perception of 
the good and the bad.